Sarah Jane Me, and welcome to In This Together, the podcast that brings you the good news stories of the week, because we all need a bit of that right now. We'll bring you inspirational tales from around the globe, the lighter moments, and the local heroes doing fantastic things to help others in the face of coronavirus. Coming up... We've come a long, long way together. Fat boy Slim heaps praise on the NHS and tells us his plans to celebrate with them at the end of this crisis. And I just thought I'd invite all the NHS workers and the blue light workers, anyone on the front line really, cheering people up through music or making them feel connected through music is the one thing I can do. Living through history, seeing the coronavirus through a child's eyes. Coronavirus, you're a funny old thing. Are you a blessing in disguise? And how to still have your big day on lockdown, we meet the Manchester police officers who took a break from the beat to say I do. All that and more on the way, including your good news. Thanks for getting in touch on social media at Sky Sarah Jane, hashtag in this together, and email in this together at sky.uk. Well, let's start with some good news. The government has announced a COVID 19 vaccine with an 80% success rate, should be available very soon. Health Secretary Matt Hancock has said. £40 million is going to go towards helping the efforts at Oxford University and Imperial College London. Here's our political correspondent, Kate McCann, with more. Some hope there on getting a vaccine. Now, why is that important? Well, it's crucial for helping those who are currently shielded, the over 70s, those with ongoing health conditions, to get back into normal life. Until there's a vaccine, they remain very uh, in very difficult circumstances trying to avoid catching COVID-19. The speed that this team have worked, this joint effort to try and come up with a vaccine is really quite something. Well, the trials have already started and the Jenner Institute team at Oxford want around a million doses to be sent out by September. We'll keep you up to date on their progress, of course, on Sky News. Joining me this week to look at the brighter side of things, GP Dr Zoe Williams, who you'll have seen on your TV screens throughout this crisis, offering medical advice and support. And she's been through the mill herself. She wasn't very well at the start of this lockdown. She joins us now. Zoe, how are you doing? Yeah, it was right at the beginning. So over a month ago now that I got symptoms, which I'm not 100% certain, but 99.9% certain were COVID. And yeah, it really wiped me out for a couple of weeks. But... I've now made a full recovery. I'm feeling good again. Back, back working out, back working, um, and quite busy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're back at work on the front line, a really busy time. What's that been like? Well, it's really bizarre because in general practice, we are doing our work differently. So most of our work is now on the phones, telephone consultations, and we do see the occasional patient if necessary. Um, but strangely, it's been rather quiet. And that's really concerning for us as GPs because I think sometimes patients either think we're not open, we very much are, or they don't want to bother us because there's so much going on, which we do want you to bother us, um, or they're worried about coming to the practice in case they pick something up. Um, so it's really important that people out there know that GP practices are open. You'll get a telephone consultation rather than face to face, but we will see you if we need to examine you as well. Yeah, it's really important to, to let people know if they're feeling ill. It might not necessarily be coronavirus related, but they should still talk uh, to their GP about it. Uh, that's a really important point to make, Zoe. And uh, what's team spirit like? Because I, I saw this week uh, you take part in a project that went viral, the You Clap For Me Now poem. And it's really interesting because the NHS at the moment is the embodiment of in this together yeah that i mean that whole you clap for me now thing just came about so quickly i was contacted by a lady called sacchini over the weekend last weekend um and then she sent me the poem on monday morning i was in clinic just recorded the few bits i read the poem and it just gave me goosebumps because i think we're in this period at the moment where people are thanking key workers for the incredible job that they're doing irrespective of their colour, their creed, which country they come from, all that's just become irrelevant. And people are just so grateful to the great job that those people are doing. And I think this poem is really just asking people, asking everybody to continue that gratitude and thanks once we get through this. And, you know, not judge a person for their ethnicity or their creed or where they've come from, but judge them on the value of who they are and the contribution that they make. 
Uh, yeah, Zoe, it's a mixture of a lot of different faces talking about the positive impact of immigration on the NHS and the other vital services that are, quite frankly, keeping this country going right now. Let's have a listen to some of it. Not some foreign invader. And the village driver. Teacher. Lifesaver. Don't say go home. Don't say not here. You know how it feels for home to be a prison. You know how it feels to live in fear. So you clap for me now. All this love you are bringing. But don't forget when it's no longer quiet. It's such a powerful message, Zoe, and I know what you mean by it giving you goosebumps. Do you think when we come out of this, attitudes will change towards immigration and the fact that, you know, so many different people with different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different life stories keep this country going? Do you know, I really hope so, because I think we're in the midst of a crisis at the moment and everybody's coming together to fight against this tiny little virus. You know, a virus is not even equivalent to a single cell of our body. It's a little bit of genetic material with a few protein spikes stuck on it and it's completely ravaging the whole world. And I think in times like this, we see ourselves, we're all one species. It doesn't matter where we're from or where we came from. We're one species and we're all clinging to each other and coming together um, to fight this thing. And I just really hope that one of the positives that will come out of this at the other end is that those sort of prejudices that have been, you know, in society for so long, people will realise that how just how pointless those prejudices are. It's a really powerful poem and it's online and you can see um, more about it uh, on the video version of this podcast. Uh, you can also find more about it on skynews.com. I want to talk to you about PPE, Zoe. Uh, it's still very much in the headlines. Personal protection equipment. Still so much controversy over the lack of availability of PPE for frontline NHS staff. But what's interesting is while the government try and figure it out, people are stepping up and stepping in. Tell me a bit about what's been going on. Yeah, so, I mean, it's week on week, isn't it? You think, gosh, when is this going to get sorted? Because I do believe that the government are doing everything that they can. Unfortunately, everything that they can is just not enough. So, yeah, so local businesses, colleges, schools are stepping up to provide PPE and in my own practice we um, as GPs when we are seeing patients we just wear the, the apron, the gloves, the mask, the surgical mask and we should wear the visors or eye protection and we didn't have the eye protection. So Dulwich College which is our local college um, they got in two of their students and their two of their staff and their design technology department have gone into mass production with 3D printers producing visors just dropped them off with a big smile on his face and said, let us know who else needs them. It's just brilliant. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? There are organisations like Scrub Hub, uh, where people who are tailors or seamstresses are, are getting their hands on and making scrubs. I saw Denise Van Alten pop up on my Instagram account the other day. She's part of an effort in Essex where interior designers who normally make curtains and blinds are sending out patterns to people in their home and materials so they can make scrubs for the NHS. And I did a really interesting interview on Sky News last week, uh, Zoe, with a, a woman called Jasmine Ho, who is part of the Med Supply Drive UK. You can get in touch with them on Twitter at Med Sup Drive UK. And basically they're asking different industries and different individuals to donate any PPE that they have around because she said places like catering facilities, nail salons, uh, tattooists, all these organisations have got equipment there that they can't use at the moment that they can donate. Yeah, if you're listening to this and think, hang on a second, I've got some PPE equipment I'd like to donate, on Twitter at Med Sup drive uk get in touch with jasmine and her team and um, now zoe last week on the podcast we were talking about the power of music uh, during times like this and i know you like your music um, the nhs such a talented bunch in so many ways uh, i don't know if you've seen this this is the choir at guys and st thomas's hospital in london they've covered a mariah carey classic to raise money for nhs charities let's have a listen With a choir with that absolutely fantastic 
rendition. Uh, Zoe, it's really taken off so much support. They're raising so much money. Uh, what did you make of it? I thought it was amazing. I mean, whoever put all of that together when you've got them all in the same shot, I mean, that, that is just <laughs> going to be a genius. But I don't know if you saw that Mariah Carey herself actually posted on Twitter. She saw it and said that it brought a tear to her eye. Oh. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? And she was like bigging up the NHS from America. Yeah, that's brilliant. It's like music royalty, the music royal seal of approval from Mariah Carey. Yvonne, who runs the choir, actually said, it's wonderful that not only is the choir brought so much positivity for others, but actually don't forget to underestimate what it does for the choir members. They meet every week, virtually now, of course, they do it all online, and it really provides some stress relief for them and a sense of community. And Zoe, you work on the front line in the NHS and you must know better than anyone how important it is right now to switch off and de-stress. It's vital to keep you going, right? Yeah, to have that bit of a release. And I think I've been quite surprised at how many of my friends and colleagues who are doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals are so talented, are so artistic. Like all these <laughs> singers, dancers, ballet dancers, yoga professionals, they're all coming out of the woodwork. It's like, wow, why did we not know this stuff about each other before? All we talked about was like blood gases and what have you. It's so fascinating, it's amazing. Okay, Dr Zoe, thanks for now. You're gonna be back uh, in a short while to spread some of the good news that's been sent to us by Sky News users. Get involved. The email address is in this together at sky.uk. Well, I'm very excited to introduce our next guest who has been the soundtrack to our nights out for the past three decades. You know, remember when we used to go out to festivals, clubs, remember that? Well, he is now the soundtrack to our kitchen discos. He is superstar DJ Fatboy Slim, and he is promising the party to end all parties for NHS staff when this crisis is over. Norman Cook is on lockdown in Brighton and joins us now. Norm, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, actually. Keeping positive. It's a bit of an odd time at the moment, isn't it? It's a very strange time. It's, uh, I mean, it, it, is it wrong to say that sometimes I'm almost excited by it? <laughs> no, it's not at all. Sometimes, sometimes you do feel, in, okay, you get that kind of sort of wartime thing, or oh, we're going through something. I, that, that word unprecedented has been way overused. But um, no, it's, it's, it's something you kind of feel like we're making history here, yeah. which, which is a good, it's a good way of spinning it. So it feels like, you know, we've got to get through this. You know, our parents might went through... Um, the blitz and and this is kind of our blitz so I see yeah occasionally I do find some excitement in in having to make do and the, the way we have to live our lives. Hmm. How's lockdown treated you because you lived a jet set lifestyle until this coronavirus hit traveling the world doing huge gigs and um, I'm just wondering how you're finding a slightly slower pace of life. It's treating me fairly so far uh, I'm lucky that I, I, I live on the beach, so we've got fresh air and, and feel like we've got some sense of space. And I'm locked down with people that I love very dearly, so that helps. Um, it's, it, I mean, it's weird for me. My, obviously, my job involves the whatever the polar opposite of social distancing is. Uh, so that was the first casualty. Um, and... I cut, so before we'd even locked down, I'd obviously I'd already got my head around the fact that I probably wouldn't be working much this summer, which is um, yeah, which again it's it's just one of those things you have to deal with. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because like you said, your job is bringing people together, you know, crowded dance floors, big gigs, and I know you've t spoken in the past about the community you find on a dance floor. You know, it doesn't matter where you come from, uh, you know, what you think about things music is the great leveller and when you all love the same tune you're all in it together yes i mean there's a tremendous sense of community that comes through uh being together listening to music uh, and losing yourself in a night out but there's also a, a power of music to to have a sense of community well the new community that the sort of online community that we're, we're living through so we found other ways of using what i do um to bring people together or give them just give them a sense of, of less isolation the fact that you know everybody's going through the same thing and they're all still in, they're in their kitchen trying to get excited on a friday night too so i don't know i mean my my in desperate times like this you kind of you look to a sense of the community of what can i contribute to it and obviously my skills of my my skill set is fairly limited in terms of what real good I can do for the for the country or for the, for humanity. But 
I suppose cheering people up through music or making them feel connected through music is the one thing I can do. Yeah, talk to me about this free party you're putting on uh, for NHS workers and their partners as well. I noticed that you were like, you know, their partners support them in what they're doing, so they deserve a big night out as well. It was just a, a friend of mine who works at the NHS said, oh, would you mind just doing a little a little viral um, for, for all the NHS workers just to sort of give them support or thanks or this is quite early on. So I, I, I made a little uh, I made a little film. Hello, this is a message from Fatboy Slim to all the doctors, all the nurses, all the key workers. And um, at the end of it, I sort of half jokingly said, and when all this is over, we should have a big party together and you know when we can and so I many people just, on that. <laughs> hey, they t certainly took me up on that and everybody i bump into in the supermarket goes when's your party happening then <laughs> and so i just thought it's the one thing that i can be thinking about and planning and doing and so we booked a night at the, the brighton center and um we just yeah and i just thought i'd invite all the nhs workers and the blue light workers anyone on the front line really to come and you know uh, shake off the cobwebs when all this is over yeah and they're certainly looking forward to that tickets sold out in three minutes and norm i don't know if you know any medics personally but boy do they know how to party i was at uni oh, yeah. with quite a few they know oh, how to let their hair down i was actually married to a nurse <laughs> at one point in my life so yeah i'm aware of it yes no I, no but also i mean more importantly um it's just uh, it's some way of A, saying thank you from me, and B, just giving people something to look forward to. I actually had a really a strange moment on Friday night when, when the tickets went out, and because they literally, because people went online and they just went that, in that second. And a, a friend of mine um, got a call from some people who were actually in the ICU saying, we couldn't get the tickets because we were on duty. Mm -hmm. um, can we get some through, kind of through the back door? And um, they, uh, and so I said, give me their phone number. So I, I FaceTimed them while they're on duty in full PPE on the ward. And for <laughs> me, that really brought it home. Just, they were so excited, even though they could hardly hear me because the phone, even the phone had to be in a plastic bag. So it was all quite muffled. But just to literally talk to the front line felt that I was connected in some way with the great job they're doing. The NHS, all of us at some point in our lives, <laughs> have an experience of the NHS. And I just wonder if it has a special resonance with you. Every Thursday night, we turn out to, to clap for carers. You're obviously giving them this free party, uh, this feel good experience. What does the NHS mean to you, Norm? Uh, well, a few things. I mean, my father was in an intensive care unit for 10 days a couple of years ago. And so I've spent a lot of time in there seeing um, what they do. So, you know, I've been touched in that way. Um, Avoiding politics, I've, you know, I've always been a big fan of the NHS and always been trying to be as vocal as possible in, in helping the government to understand how uh, much we, we should be looking after the NHS and, you know, basically financially. So, I mean, one, you know, if you're looking for good news, the good news is that an awful lot of politicians who maybe didn't think the NHS was that important now realise how important it can be in our lives some of them very, very directly. Obviously, you talked about your summer changing this year. Ibiza season cancelled, Glastonbury cancelled. And this party that you're throwing for NHS staff won't be until October. When do you think we'll be gigging in the same way again in terms of, like you said, what you do is all about bringing people together. And it's going to take a while for that to come back, isn't it, naturally? Mm, I mean... Obviously, nobody knows, but one thing I'm pretty much sure of is that the, the, the shutters will come up very slowly and in increments. And I'm fi kind of figuring that what I do is going to be one of the last things that's, that's, that's allowed again and that's appropriate again. Um, so, there, you know, so many other parts of our lives will open up first. And like I said, you know, bringing tons of sweaty people together in a very confined space is probably the most irresponsible thing. So it would be the last thing to come back, which just will make us cherish it even more when that moment. I mean, the sad thing is that they won't be that, that sort of VE day moment where we can all go and dance in the streets because it will happen so gradually, probably over six months, I would have thought. Yeah. Uh, and we'll be the last, the last thing. I think, I mean, I could see myself probably if there's a limit of like 500 people, I, I should just be just phoning up every club 
that's got a fire limit of 490 and go, can I play it tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, there's, a few, there's a few venues in Brighton that I've got a sort of understanding with that the minute that they're allowed to, we're just going to put on a party, you know, yeah. of whatever, uh, at whatever level we can. But I think, I think you know, the, the, the big international festivals are probably the worst thing we could be doing right now because people are traveling from all over the world and then we're putting them all, squashing them all together in a very big, un, un, unseemly pile. Uh, so I'm not really, I mean, I, at the moment I'm looking at half my summer has been um, canceled so far and there, there's, you know, things like that. There's, as time of speaking, Camp Festival is still on, but I haven't really got my hopes set on anything large happening this summer. Uh, well we know you enjoy the intimate gigs as well so that'll be yeah. good to ease you back into it and also i don't know if you've seen that picture doing the rounds on social media norm of the first plane out to ibiza when eventually people are allowed to return it is literally people hanging off the wings and hanging out the windows desperate to get back out there and just you know have that feel good factor again yeah but that, i mean there is plenty to feel good out over in the meantime and I thought I think what Camp Festival did um, over the Easter weekend was great especially for for us parents to to get our kids sort of somehow so it just I don't know just getting a virtual feeling of letting your hair down and relaxing and, and celebrating rather than, than mourning. Oh yeah the kitchen disco is big right now in lockdown it's big in my household I know it's big in yours and um, because like every good parent, you're taking your homeschooling very seriously. A bit different though, you've got a DJ school going. A uh, 10 year old Nelly, your daughter, uh, she gets top marks because this was her performance the other week. Hello, you two million people that are watching this, and I can't believe I'm doing this. Hi, my name is Nelly Cook, and from now on, also known as Fat Girl Slim. <laughs> So how did this all come about, Norm? It seems like music very much is the family trade. Uh, well, Nelly's kind of been sort of watching me DJ all her life and thinking, how hard can it be? Um, <laughs> she, so she's, no, she's been kind of learning um, uh, with me. And then in the midst of all, I, I do a, every Friday night, I do a, a lockdown mix hour for Kitchen Neighbours. But I've, I've held off from doing the actual kind of home gigs because watching a DJ without an audience is kind of, like watching paint dry for me but then um camp festival wanted to do a thing that got all the kids up and they were doing a big sleep out sleep in your gardens pretend you're at a festival and they asked all the people who were going to be appearing at camp festival to, to contribute something and then i was just because i was talking to my daughter nelly and camp festival this summer was going to be her first ever festival and she's going to be so disappointed if if it doesn't happen mm. and um so i just thought it was a way of getting her involved in camp festival and i don't know i just i just thought i wonder if i could get nelly to do gay and i'd help and would that be any good and i didn't really didn't know if it was going to be any good i don't know if it was going to be enjoyable for other people if it was a bit self-indulgent but it was it was fun for me and nelly to do to set it all up and do it and work out a little set for her uh, but it, it really caught the public's imagination yeah it, it, it's gonna be interesting to see who gets more bookings when we come out of this on the other side because boy oh boy that was one great debut set yeah, I mean, she fabulous i mean she, i was so good. proud because she just stepped up to it like she'd been doing it all her life <laughs> and yet she had a marriage proposal she's got various <laughs> gig bookings but, but i mean that's she's had five million streams and i thought the other day Five million people, that's probably more than I've ever DJed to in my whole career. <laughs> All that traveling and late nights and everything, and just, she just strolls in and does five million on, on the first go. But no, I'm very, very proud of that. And, and just, I just felt that is me using my talents to keep the nation's uh, um, morale buoyant yeah. uh, in the best of my capabilities. I've, I don't know, some, some things seem a little trivial at a time like this. And I mean, for a while, I thought what I did was, you know, it looked like everybody was doing, you know, DJing from their bedroom. And I was like, at a point like this, people don't really want to watch you DJ in your bedroom. 
they've got bigger fish to fry and they've got kids to look after it you know and well norm it's been so good to talk to you i know you've got a pub quiz later on uh, and my producer did say norm might be a four or five minutes late for this chat because he's having a shave so uh, for those who are watching on the video version of this on youtube you should be honored those listening to the podcast you'll be disappointed but now i know it's for the pub quiz later on norm i, I don't know well i don't know about you see so, well probably you, you're still in the public eye so you don't let yourself go but certain <laughs> standards i thought because i thought it was an audio podcast i, I didn't <laughs> shave for a couple of days i norm you're not alone when i found out we were doing a video of this version of this podcast i was very disappointed <laughs> Well, yeah, it's good. It keeps you on your toes. But my my mum, my favourite um, quote from all of this is my mum, who self she's quite old and frail, so she self isolated weeks before the lockdown, and, and and every time I say to her, "How are you getting on?" She said, "Well, I've got the garden. I've got you know." And she's got her husband, and uh, she said, "To be honest, she said it's quite nice." She said because I don't have to feel like I feel like I have to make the effort because I know no one's coming round. <laughs> Norm, thank you so much for talking to us. Norman Cook, aka Fatboy Slim, putting on that party to end all parties for NHS staff in October. It's been great to chat and stay safe. Nice one. You, you too. Stay safe, stay sane. Aha. Since the lockdown, so many weddings have been postponed or cancelled. However, many are still going ahead in homes. Big congratulations to the new Mr and Mrs Strachan, Julia and Nigel, who were going to get married in London in June, but they actually got hitched this week on lockdown in their back garden in Jersey with their children present. As Julia said, love always wins. Uh, others have been saying I do online with family and friends attending on platforms like Zoom. Uh, take for instance Harvey Skelton and Hayley Pittman from Bristol. Uh, there was even the time on a tradition of a gate crasher, albeit a celebrity one. They now kiss the bride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a special thank you from us at For Better For Worse. To sing your first dance song, we present Ellie Golding. It's Ellie Golding. <laughs> oh my God, it's Ellie Golding. Hey. So congratulations, Harvey and Hayley, and uh, you're both heroes, and we all love you. And believe it or not, some weddings have been taking place at work on the front line, just like it did for Sergeant Marie McNulty and PC Jay McGreevy. They are part of Greater Manchester Police's Berry Division and they join me now. Hello both, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now tell me what the original plan was. So the original plan was we've been planning it for about 10 months and um, we were going to get married um, at a hotel called Stirk House in Gisborne um, with all our family and friends but Obviously, due to the lockdown, um, that's no longer possible. So we've had to postpone until next year. And you were working on what was meant to be your wedding day, a really busy time for the police at the moment. Um, but you actually ended up getting married at Berry Police Station. Talk to me about that, how that came about, Jay. Um, yeah, it was quite strange, really, because we were looking forward so much to the big day and then to have to come to work on what would have been, been your wedding day. Um, not not really knowing what was going to happen, uh, mm. to then come into work and get given my little corsage to wear, uh, <laughs> which I ended up wearing around the division all day. Got quite a few glances from members of the public as well as <laughs> colleagues as to why I'm wearing a, a pink flower on my body armour. Because you had been talking to your boss about this, hadn't you? Because as it happened, your boss at Berry Police Station is also a priest. So you'd been talking about what you could do that day, perhaps, to mark the occasion that was meant to be your wedding day and it sort of snowballed from there didn't it so talk to me about what happened from the moment you arrived at the station so um the day before i had spoke to mr findlow uh, who's an inspector but he's also an ordained um anglican priest um and we made the decision that we wanted to still exchange our rings on what would have been our wedding day so uh, we kind of asked him what he could possibly do um so he decided that he'd be able to bless the rings uh, and do a, a small ceremony. So he went and got permission from the Bishop of Middleton um, to be able to carry out a small ceremony. So um, when I came into work the next morning, uh, the morning of our wedding, the girls in the office had decorated all um, the office. Uh, they were playing Here Comes the Bride. 
as I walked in and um, there was some champagne and flowers waiting for us. Um, <laughs> so obviously we then went about and did our normal daily work. And then at the end of the day, um, Mr. Finlaw did a little ceremony for us and we managed to exchange our rings. Jay, I love this. It's not quite the wedding you imagined. But how did it feel? Because, you know, everybody, when they think of weddings, thinks of big white dresses, big dinners, discos, bands, all the hoopla that goes with it. But what did you actually feel on the day? It must have been so special. It was. It was lovely. It was really emotional. Uh, Mr. Finlaw did a lovely service. Um, the girls brought me when I walked in. I, I burst into tears in the morning. <laughs> um, I think they'll think I'm the big tough cooker and serious. I just showed my true colours there. Um, but yeah, it, it was lovely. It was emotional. It's not what we anticipated. No, it, it, was, um, it, was, it was very personal because there's a lot of things going on in the world, never mind, you know, the coronavirus that's going around. But to have to get on with a bit of normality, um, it felt very personal to me because I got it in my head that there's no way in the world that you get married at this moment in time. There was no way of doing anything like that. And to have something so personal from... Uh, somebody was offering to do us uh, a service and um, to actually feel like you were part of a wedding service. I got the nerves, I got the jang, you know, I got all the uh, <laughs> wedding nerves that people get. Um, and, but it was really nice to actually feel like I was, you know, um, doing something really special at a time when, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty about it. Well, Jay, I know that the big party and the big celebration with families and friends is on hold for now you're hoping to do it this time next year but after you had your ceremony you had to get back on the front line i just want to know what that's like at the moment where you're uh, on the streets in berry what's it like being on the front line of this crisis right now it's a very strange time you know uh, unfortunately we need to get used to this for quite a while um you know we've got people unfortunately still having house parties and completely you know ignoring the lockdown rules they need to stay safe yeah there's a big part of your job isn't it at the moment educating the public on the need why they have to stay at home it's so difficult for people at the moment with the weather so nice and people's lives changing but you're reminding them why they have to do that well marie and jay a big thank you from all of us for the work that you continue to do and a big congratulations as well i know you're gonna have to wait a while to celebrate with family and friends but it sounds like you had a really personal special day and we wish you the best of luck for the future thank, thank you very much now, volunteering is big during this crisis. Over 750,000 people across Britain signed up to create the National Help Service to provide support to the NHS. There are lots of schemes up and down the country as well at a local level that are helping the vulnerable and isolated uh, during the lockdown. Three young brothers from Shropshire, they wanted to help the elderly in their local area, particularly if they're on their own at the moment during lockdown. And their new project, Cheerful Chat, was created. Well, I'm delighted to say that Johnny, Tom and Ben Thurston join us now. Hi, boys. Hi. Hi. Um, well, this is a wonderful project you've set up. It's an online chat service for elderly people in your area. Who came up with the idea? Um, well, we, we all kind of did it together. If you, we, we got it from calling our grandparents and we just were wondering how they were because everyone's in lockdown, you can't go visit anyone. And so we decided that we'd just start calling people to see how everyone is really. Yeah, I love that. So basically you're adopting more grandparents. That's what you're doing. Kind of. <laughs> and Johnny, talk to me about who's getting in touch with you and what you talk about. Um, so it starts, so we greet each other. So we say like, hello, how are you doing? And then basically it just flows from there. So the grandparents just say what they want to say. It's interesting, isn't it, Ben? Because you might be the only people they talk to all day. How do you try and cheer them up? Well, we kind of just like talk about what they like and try and just like have a happy chat and, and let them say what they want to say. And if they mm -hmm. like want to say have lunch, like lunch then or something, maybe another time we can call them again. Tom, why did you want to do this? Because you don't have to do this. You've got your own grandparents to chat to. Why did you feel that you needed to set up Cheerful Chat? Well, we thought that so many people um, in lockdown um, often live by themselves, especially maybe older people, and they don't have the best grasp of technology. So mm. we decided to do it because we really wanted to make a change during this time. Um, 
because so many other people are doing such good things coronavirus and so we really wanted to help out and so this was our way of helping yeah it's interesting isn't it because you're so young i know you want to volunteer but you can't go out and do deliveries by yourself you can't drive anyone anywhere so what you can do is talk to people Johnny and I just wonder you know what are some of the uh, funny stories that you've told people or they've told you what are the, some of the interesting chats you've been having over the last few days and weeks we've had some very interesting ones for example one of our earlier calls talked about how someone preferred riding camels to elephants <laughs> in Shropshire um I don't think they lived in Shropshire but because we don't just call in Shropshire we call Roughly in UK, England. Yeah, I'd love. I'd love to know what what one the camel or the elephant. Um, I think it was the camel. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. You can have fun, frivolous chats. It doesn't have to be particularly serious. Who would win, a camel or an elephant? Um, it, it's 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 brilliant that you boys are doing this. Uh, well, boys, you are brilliant chatterboxes doing your bit. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us, Johnny, Tom, and Ben Thurston. Good to chat. Thank you. Now, a beautiful poem landed in our inbox this week, written by six-year-old Tabitha Campbell from Henley in Oxfordshire. Tatty, as her family call her, shares her thoughts on the coronavirus and her time with her family on lockdown. It is the sweetest thing you'll hear today. Let's have a listen. Coronavirus, you're a funny old thing. Are you a blessing in disguise? I really miss my family and friends. And you've taken far too many lives. Coronavirus, I'm going to tell you a secret. To me, you've been a lot of fun. I've got to hang out with my family and eat ice cream in the sun. Well, the poem's author Tatty joins us now alongside her dad, Anthony. Hello, both. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you guys? Really good, aren't we, Tats? Oh, Tatty, we loved your poem here on In This Together, looking for the good and all the bad stuff that's going on. And I like the question you asked, is coronavirus a blessing in disguise? What do you think? There's good things and there's bad things, aren't there, about the coronavirus. What are the good things, Tats? We can eat lunch and supper all together. We can play games. We do play a lot of games. We've got quite into cards in this family. So there's lots of cards. What's your favourite card game? Uno. Who's the champion? <laughs> Me. You do talk about them being the Uno champion, Tatty. Uh, what have you and your sisters been doing? What fun things have you been getting up to? It's fun because I've been watching Kiki and Indy um, do funny things. <laughs> We've got a trampoline. We just put a trampoline in. So that's, that's, that's been a lot, of, um, a lot of fun, hasn't it? What other mm. things have you done? What do you miss? My friends. Because not... Not a lot we get to see them. We can only stand by them. I bet you're looking forward to giving them all a big hug when this is all over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I bet you are. Anthony, talk to us um, about what you're saying to your children. They're three of them, six, four and two. It's interesting as a parent, isn't it, in terms of how do you stop them from feeling frightened or unsettled and keep them positive when at times, you know, you and your wife Katie must feel pretty unsettled. Yeah, I mean, it is obviously unsettling for everyone. But actually, I think we've got to see this sometimes through the eyes of the kids. And for the kids, you know, they've got their mum and dad around them all the time. So their security blanket is really good at the moment. Um, and, you know, ultimately, we're having a great time. You know, we're very lucky that we've got a, a bit of out, outdoor space, a garden. Uh, and that makes a big difference. And the fact is, is that, you know, as a dad who loves his kids, I get to spend lunch and, and supper and breakfast with them and see way more of them than I ever ever would have done before and you know what we've all been given the gift of time right we haven't we weren't asked for this gift but we've got it and I'm pretty determined that we're going to make the most of it uh, and I think we we really are and that was part of the reason that I started doing these corona diaries because I kind of want to look back at these times and remember the positives and the good things about it and I think that, you know, we're bombarded all the time with negativity around coronavirus. But actually, you know, particularly from the kids' point of view, I think there's a lot of good things. And, you know, the Corona Diaries, from our perspective, our family perspective, is all about kind of sharing that with other people. Because, you know, outside of the kind of media bubble, we get a lot of good news stories, which I know you're focusing on 
on mm-hmm. here with the podcast and um we just felt that was really important to kind of spread really yeah as tati's poem said you're living through history and you're documenting that as a family in your coronavirus diaries and we can have a flavor now of what you've been up to the camera corona Dummy. Who's Andy Murray? Three, four. Everyone you can! You can. Oh. So, Anthony, did this start as a way of keeping the kids occupied? Because, as I said, they're six, four, and two, uh, homeschooling. I'm sure there is some for the eldest, um, but it's not going to give your day as much structure as it is for other families. And obviously, you can't go out and about to keep them busy. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think initially it was all about, well, for me, actually, as a as quite a creative person, I run a creative agency. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was kind of a way of keeping sane of doing these videos, because I was like, well, what am I going to, what am I going to film? What stories am I going to tell for the next few weeks, few months, few years? <laughs> um, so, so for me, it was really important to just um, see what I had in front of me and tell stories from that. And actually, that then turned into something really positive for the kids. Actually, we've really enjoyed putting little stories together. You know, we've done challenges. We've done a music video. We've, of course, done the poem. So, you know, it's it's about staying upbeat and positive and keeping the kids occupied as well because um, homeschooling has its trials and tribulations, as I'm sure lots of people watching will know. I, I know you take part in Clap for Carers as a family every week. You're encouraging people to go a step further, though, aren't you, Anthony, and nominate their health hero, which I think is a lovely idea. Uh, tell us more about it. How can people do this? And as a family, who's your health hero? Um, so first, firstly, my health hero is my sister, um, Ali, who's a midwife at Lewisham Hospital, and she's doing amazing things uh, during this period of time. And yeah, the Clap for Care is an amazing thing that we take part in as a, as a family every Thursday. It's a real highlight of the week, and I know it is for so many people. Um, but it's quite generic, right? Like, we, we clap for all our heroes. Whereas what I thought would be really lovely would be to actually pick people out personally that we all know that are health heroes in our lives. Um, and so it was a movement that we started with uh, We Care for NHS, which is their, their tag on Instagram. Um, And it's all about kind of inspiring people to put a message out there for their health heroes individually and flooding social media with support for these amazing people very much individually. And the idea is that we end up with this wall of positivity, this wall of noise that is for all the individual people that make up our, our NHS to say thank you to them. Because, you know, wouldn't it be amazing if at the end of this, every single health hero in this country had a message from someone um, saying thank you to them individually that was out there, that was public. Anthony, it's a lovely idea. I'm sure a lot of people will be getting in touch, nominating their health heroes. It's been great to talk to you. Uh, Thanks very much. Goodbye to the Campbells. Goodbye. Say bye. bye. Thanks. It's time for your good news now. Hashtag in this together. We welcome GP Dr. Zoe Williams. She's back to share your good news. So many people getting in touch uh, over the last week. In this together at sky.uk is the email address. Or you can get in touch on social media at Sky or Sarah Jane. Hashtag in this together. Uh, Amy Witherington from Pets Pajamas Dog Travel website has got in touch. They're using their Instagram page at the moment to ask the country's dog owners to share how their furry best friends have been helping them out, keeping them safe during lockdown and they're calling for more people to join in you can upload videos uh, send in your messages using the hashtag dogs at home they've got some celebrities involved as well zoe the likes of david gandy he's got a very cute little dog uh, the presenter laura whitmore and plenty of made in chelsea stars as well uh, let's take a look at one of the videos hi everyone it's laura whitmore and mick the dog mick makes me happy because uh he has to love me he has no choice um I find it quite calming um, even though it's not always a calming situation but it's it's lovely to feel that much love from somebody who gets excited every time you wake up in the morning they're excited to see you um, that's nice because not everybody is normally have you got any pets Zoe no but I really want one I really want a dog <laughs> I do now right as well <laughs> the dog that I've, I've fallen in love with the talking dog I don't know if you've seen the meme it's this little dog and he talks with a Geordie accent 
and he's always slagging off his carers <laughs> because they're, he's saying they're just eating too much and he's not getting enough walks. <laughs> I saw a video from America online the other week of a pound and all the staff were clapping because the pound was empty because of lockdown. So many people have adopted pets or given them foster homes during this lockdown because people, if they're isolating on their own, need a bit of company, right? Exactly, but we must remember a dog is for life, not just for exactly. laughter. Talk to me about Clap for Carers, Zoe. Obviously, this happens uh, every Thursday night. Uh, I've been taking part. Uh, I hope you've been hearing it, and I hope it's been encouraging you in the work that you do. Uh, this is a slightly different take on it. Yes, so Johnny Kelsey from the Dole Foundation. So the Dole is a drum. It's an Indian drum. So he's taking mm. Clap for Carers to a new level. So on his London street, when everyone is out there, clapping and banging their pans, he's actually been playing for his neighbours and he's actually played for the <laughs> Queen. So they're in oh, for wow. quite a treat. So here's Johnny. <laughs> So brilliant. I've been thinking of ways to up my game. It was pots and pans last week. Um, I was on the Chris Evans breakfast show on Virgin this week and he said, what about a Vuvuzela? Do you remember those from the Football World Cup, the really noisy instruments? And I said, NHS workers need our support. We don't need to add to their stress with a Vuvuzela. Um, so I've still got a bit of time, still got a bit of time to think about how I can up my game. One of, one of the things that's a bit oh, weird, yeah. I think, as an, as an NHS worker, and I spoke to, so I'm going to start working at the Nightingale. We had our training last week and it was one of the questions that we were asked in our psychology session is how do you feel about this clapping for carers and being named heroes and I think for us on the front line we're just doing the same job we've always done and it's, it's sometimes it's a little bit awkward um, so when I'm on my front doorstep and I'm clapping um, I've moved here quite recently and I'm almost grateful that nobody knows that I'm a doctor because if they were sort of directing that towards me I think I'd just find it a bit awkward that's the thing, Zoe. Everyone in the NHS says, it's just my job. This is what I do. I don't want any thanks for it. But take it, for goodness sake. You deserve our thanks and you deserve our praise. It's brilliant that you're so modest about it, but you deserve it, Zoe. Don't be so modest. It's definitely not awkward for us. Keep it coming. <laughs> Keep it coming. We'll take the thanks. I think it's just really important for people as well, that sense of community, because they're in their own homes, but once a week they come out and they see that actually, do you know what, we're all in this together. It's a really positive moment. Everyone's got a big smile on their face. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it's important for everyone. So yeah, let's definitely keep doing it. So I wanted to tell you about, there's a, there's a company called Little Futures Children's Invites, and they make invites, virtual invites, um, for parties. And now they've given an option for people who are purchasing these invites to donate to the NHS. So they can give a, a percentage of a gift to the NHS, and, um, and the company themselves, Little Futures Children's Invites, they'll waiver their fee and send that directly to the NHS appeal as well. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? Because all the kids on lockdown that are having birthdays can't see their friends. And it's not just kids, Zoe. I know that it was your 40th recently and I got a very special invite to come to your birthday party online. Yeah, it was mental. So it was my 40th birthday on Friday night. I planned to be in Jamaica. Obviously that didn't happen. Um, yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so I had a massive Zoom party. One of my friends, she, um, she has the Zoom subscription so you can have up to 100 people. So wow. we, managed to, we, managed, we managed to arrange for Gok One to be DJing via Instagram Live and for everyone to be on my TV screen. And um, I used to play rugby at uni and the rugby girls, older habits die hard. I was drinking champagne <laughs> and every time I took, took my glass, they're going, down it, down it. So I had this like, crazy party for an hour and a half. I was very tipsy at the end of it, and then <laughs> but it was great. You've just got to make the most of it, haven't you? Well, yeah, exactly, and you haven't got too far to stumble to bed after the party's over. Uh, so it's adults and kids enjoying parties online because, of course, we can't meet up with our friends at the moment, uh, but good on that company for donating uh, a fee to help kids get together online, enjoy their birthdays, and raise a bit of money for good causes in the process. Um, we were talking earlier about weddings, and so many of them postponed and cancelled, but some still going ahead. 
head. Uh, for those of you who love live music, you might have heard of the Function Band. Uh, now they're a show band, there's around 20 of them that perform. Uh, they often perform at celebrity parties. Um, they were recently performing, before lockdown, at the 30th birthday party of Billy Fairs from The Only Way Is Essex. <laughs> Uh, well, they're a hugely popular in-demand band and their founder, Zoe, he is Dan Rosen, he got in touch with this message. We're so uh, grateful for all the amazing work that the NHS uh, are doing and putting their lives at risk. So we wanted to give something back if we could. So we thought we'd run a free competition um, for one lucky NHS worker to win the function band performing at their wedding. And to enter, you just head over to Instagram. Uh, our handle is at the function band and look at our latest post and just comment on that with your Instagram handle or your friend or family member. And that's it. So good luck and get tagging. Uh, right, finally, to play us out, Zoe, this is brilliant. This is the Showcase Music School who got in touch with us uh, online to say that they've set up virtually. So they are now the virtual youth orchestra. They're all under 18 uh, and they've been doing their own rendition of a lot of famous pieces of music, including a piece of music you might recognise. Uh, this is the Showcase Music School, the virtual youth orchestra with their rendition of the Sky Knees theme tune. And that's gonna play us out this week. Uh, Zoe, it's been really good to see you and speak to you. Thank you so much. And keep up the good work on the front line. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for keeping us all sane and entertaining us. <laughs> and yeah, this piece of music is just amazing. Oh.